so good morning ladies and gentlemen so it's a great opportunity uh, to share my knowledge on outcome based education so this was myself i am uh, r anjanal naik working as a associate professor in department of ea so i am happy with this presenting about uh, the outcome based education now i would like to start my presentation uh, just with the history of uh, the outcome based education when the term started okay you can see this uh, this is uh, the sar during 2009 to 2013 it consists of the four parts part 1 to part 4 for 1000 marks so here already started the terms you see this PEO is there, PEO is there, program outcomes there under engineering graduate program. So the terms already started from 2009 to 2013 onwards. But the real OB start from January 2013 onwards. Okay. But you can see this. in entire sir they will ask about uh, assessment year academic year and the latest year graduation or last year graduation so what does it mean so i will give one example here you can see this one so this is a current academic year 2018 19 so m1 m2 m3 m4 i will go up to m6 okay so the current academy year m1 m2 m3 nothing but 17 18 16 17 15 16 but when it comes to our assessment year the last year complete data will comes under assessment year then assessment year minus 1 assessment year minus 2 so the nba will be focus only the last three assessment years nothing but 17 18 16 17 and 15 16 okay and for str they will calculate 18 19 also so this is about assessment year but to say this one in 2014 one batch joined okay so after four years means 17 18 they passed out so this batch comes under latest year graduation so 14 15 or lyg or assessment year m3 all are same then we will go back G1 and G0. So MBA will focus three assessment year and last three year graduation levels. This is very important. So the real OB already we told about the real OB start from January 2000 onwards for thousand marks. It has nine criteria. So program outcomes you already know that one information. Again, in January 2016. so another format modified it consists of 10 criteria we know that one so they divided as a for four gram level seven criteria and 10 as a institute level okay but the problem is with obe means for example i will show you this is a approval process handbook okay so everybody your institute compulsory is a mandatory to follow the guidelines given by aset so this is a reference book but there is no reference book for nba but they given the process for example a person will be he will give the his own perception mind so uh, uh, so he will give the follow this method but another person for example in a different area so his that may be different so he will follow you can follow this one so there is no exact process for nba so that's the main drawback but luckily this year we got one uh, exam related forms by act so this give the clear picture about the oba so every institute they have to follow as per act guidelines now the guidelines are given but it will take some time to implement this one now we got there are some reference book okay then always we will follow this one thus better 
So I will explain the entire lecture in two phases, design phase and implementation phase. So let me talk about uh, the phase. We have a, a great institute and which has a, a institute vision and mission. So vision is anything but the, the future of our institution. So what our institute after 20 to 30 years, it's very long term goal. It will took at least, uh, uh, it will take 20 to 30 years. Okay. So for example, this is our institutional vision. Okay, technically vibrant, uh, we already know that one. To train them to face the global challenges. So to achieve this vision, we have to follow various steps to achieve this vision. That is called the mission statement. So we have a one, two, three, four, there are five steps. So if you do this one, automatically you will achieve this vision. Okay. So once our institute has a, a good vision and a mission, to achieve this vision and mission, they establish the various department. Okay. Department, department two up to department what are things so every department has their own vision and mission every department has their own vision and mission so this department has different programs pg and uc but this department only the uc program so every each and program they have their different pos and psos pos and course outcomes also Okay, but NBA will be focused only on these programs. If you go for apply UG program, so they will concentrate only this program here, and if you go for PG, you will concentrate only the PG programs. Okay. So now I would like to proceed about uh, the process to define the department vision and mission. So in, I will tell you a very simple process. The department vision and mission statement developed by in the two phases are two steps only. Simple manner number one is the statement always they will correlate it to the institute vision mission. That is first condition. Whatever you develop the department vision statement, compulsory to correlate to the institution vision mission. At the same time, you will take the opinion from the various stakeholders, internal stakeholder, external stakeholder. So the NBA given the clear about the internal, who are the internal stakeholder, who are the external stakeholders. So, just by considering these two inputs, we will develop the department vision and mission. So, how we are involving, they will ask you how we are involving the stakeholders. Sometimes the stakeholders are not possible, but we will, so the stakeholder means these are the internal stakeholders involved, these are the external stakeholders, we have to justify that. So after develop the department vision mission, so this one, for example, I will give an example here. So this is my vision. The department has some vision. So my vision is to produce a globally competent innovative engineers to serve the society and the industry. So this is my a long term goal. So this is a long term goal. So to achieve this vision, how do you achieve this vision? But to providing a good, excellent curriculum. This is my one of the goal. To achieve this vision, I have to follow various steps. Step one, two, three, four. Number one is 
providing excellent curriculum not only a curriculum we have to provide a good learning environment and facilities also and to serve the society we need definitely we can promote the ethical and moral values to the students and also the faculty industry means we can establish a good relation between industry and student interaction okay so how will i achieve this one how will i achieve to achieve this one how do you mean definitely we will take collect the data the element details we will take the collecting data then we will achieve whether whether with this statement we achieved or not after defining the vision mission we have to define that pos the pos here are the two factor one is you have to consider the department vision mission statement and also involving stakeholders the same as the previous slide okay so this is strongly correlation between the pos with the department vision mission statement and also we have to involve the stakeholders to define the pos